guys, today I'm bringing you the third part in the series looking at British Army reenacting kit for the Second World War in the Northwest European Theatre. And as you may have guessed, looking at how the mannequins have been built up a bit further with equipment, we're going to be looking at our anti gas kit today. We have on the chest here the Mark VI respirator haversack, and on the shoulders we have the anti gas cape. And this is the method for wearing early war. We're going to be looking at two different respirator haversacks in this video, and obviously the anti gas cape. The two respirators we're going to be looking at is the Mark VI you can see here and the light anti-gas respirator. Those two will carry you through a long period of the war if you can get one of each. The first haversack we're going to look at is this, the Mark VI, which is the one that's on the mannequin. And this is what you're going to want to look for if you're looking to do earlier war uh, within the time frame that we've looked at in these videos. Obviously that being that the mannequin has Mark II pouches, that's going to be middle of 1940 onwards. And this is the correct respirator haversack for that period. Um, the Mark VI will cover you through the majority of the time when gas warfare, earlier in the war, when gas warfare was seen as being a major threat. Mid-war, the Mark VII haversack is introduced, um, which differs slightly from this. We're not going to be covering that in the video. The reason being is that during the middle of the war, the middle years, the, threat of, the perceived threat of gas attack was seen to diminish greatly. So it's not really necessary to have the same level of anti-gas kit for that period. Uh, you don't see the anti-gas cape and the haversack for the respirator being carried all the time as you do early war. Late war again, of course, the threat re-emerges or the perceived threat re-emerges and the light anti-gas respirator is then carried uh, through Northwest Europe. So the two haversacks we're looking at here cover through that the two major periods of uh, of, in photographs and so forth, where it's seen that respirator haversacks are being carried. So first of all, the Mark VI. Uh, this is the, the main compartment that we're looking at here, which is actually worn against the body, like that. Um, contains the general service respirator. The two outer compartments, the one on the left here as you're looking at it, contains the tin for the anti-gas ointment, and the one on the right as you're looking at it would contain uh, eye shields. Don't have those in there at the moment. In terms of contents, I wouldn't recommend um, getting those together as basic kit. There's something to look at once you've got all the other bits sorted because you can pad these out and you're not going to be wearing the general service respirator because, of course, the filter contains blue asbestos. So you're not going to be wanting to wear the respirator and breathing through it. Um, these are still relatively easy to find. The Mark VI is not that uncommon. It's not common, but it's not that uncommon to find. And you can generally find these in good solid condition for reenacting use. Um, it's, uh, as I say, it will carry you through, uh, as we've said before, it will carry you through the period post Dunkirk uh, where the respirator have a sack and the anti-gas cape were being carried pretty much at all times. Um, so there's no, there's definitely no necessity to buy a Mark 7 to supplement this, um, although you can get them and they're easy to find. Uh, this is the one to get for that time period. Um, you don't see the Mark 7 in use a great deal, except for those troops later on who weren't issued the light anti-gas respirator. Some troops continued to use the general service respirator right through the end of the war, particularly if not frontline, obviously. Frontline troops tended to get the new anti-gas equipment and indeed anti-gas equipment is one of those areas where, where a lot of other equipment has a lead time between introduction and it actually being issued out. Anti-gas equipment tended to be issued fairly rapidly and replaced fairly rapidly as opposed to things being replaced as they wore out because obviously it was seen as, a, as an essential bit of kit and you want your troops to have the, the latest technology. So that's for the early war uh, setup we've been looking at. If you're wanting to cover a greater period of time or if you're looking primarily to do late war, mid to late war, uh, you'll want to get one of these. This is a light anti-gas respirator have a sack. And if you look at the details of it here, you can see the two ointment pockets on the sides there, the shoulder strap, which is removable, and the clips, which allow it to be worn on the back of the belt. Again, contents wise, you can pick these up with respirators, getting the other contents together like the anti-dim, the ointment and so forth is perhaps something to do a little bit later on once you've got all the rest of your kit together. But these are not uncommon to find. They're very, very uh, plentiful on the surplus market and uh, the haversack certainly you can pick up very cheaply at events and things. So it's definitely something I would recommend buying. Even if you're focusing on early war, if you get one of these, you can always move into, into later war. Although obviously if you're doing late war, you're going to want to get one of these as a priority. Introduced in 1943, um, and then obviously worn through the end of the war by frontline troops. Some would continue to use the general service respirator um, who weren't frontline. Uh, that's certainly seen, but the, this is the standard 
by that point, basically, of, of the respirator being issued to British infantry. Um, so the light anti-gas respirator have a sack, as I say, as with the Mark VI, you can pad this out to start with and then later on perhaps look at getting the full contents together, although it's not uncommon to find these with the respirator included. Uh, if you are buying one with the respirator included, for point of interest I will show you, you want to try and find, for versatility's sake, a respirator with the uh, dished in um, XL valve housing there and also in terms of filter, you want to get the larger filter. And you'll find these often with the Danish uh, reissue stamp from um, the majority of them were reissued for Danish uh, civil defence use. So that's what you want to look at. If you're uh, Because these often come with a respirator, I thought I'd show that as well. Although getting the respirator itself is not necessarily a, a, an early priority when getting your kit together for the first time. So the last bit of kit we're going to look at is the anti-gas cape. Uh, this is a Watt Price Glory reproduction. There are several different options for these on the market, but the Watt Price Glory ones are the ones I've gone for and the ones the rest of our group's gone for. Uh, so we get a, a uniform look. Um, this has, uh, early in the war, these would be carried up on the shoulders. And this has the post uh, September 1940 uh, modification where you have a piece of whip cord tied around it uh, in a loop. You loop there and then the, the whip cord passes back through itself and attaches onto the haversack. I will be doing a separate video on the different methods of wearing these or carrying these rather through the war. And uh, that, that will be a separate video that I, once I've done it, I'll put a card up in the corner of the video linking through to that so you have that information. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this video. This just has, I'm mentioning this purely because it has this modification that came in September 1940. And the reason I've done that is that the mannequin we've looked at so far, the components of the equipment, date the kit to 1940 onwards, so mid-1940, late-1940 onwards. So that's a modification that came in then. Later in the war, this would no longer be carried up on the shoulders. Uh, the point of it being on the shoulders is, and this modification is it can unroll itself down your back and be put on very quickly. Um, the tapes are used to attach it for that purpose. Later in the war, it would just be carried on the back of the belt tied on um, because the, the need to don it uh, that rapidly was seen to diminish. Also, uh, at certain times you see these carried underneath the flap of the haversack in place of the ground sheet cape, which is something we're going to look at in a future video. So it's a very important bit of kit from that point of view. It can actually, you can dispense with the ground sheet cape and carry one of these in certain instances. During the war, rulings on whether or not it was to be used as a waterproof as well changed depending on the year. And do a bit of research on that, find out. Although a lot of soldiers just ignored that and wore them anyway because they are a very effective waterproof. They're designed to work against vapor, uh, vesicant um, mustard gas basically and therefore they are waterproof and they do um, they do do keep the rain off they're very effective for that uh, this one is a little bit ragged and needs a little bit of repair which I'm going to have to look into doing um, see if I can find some suitable material to do it so uh, there it is that's a look at the the anti-gas cape I will be doing as I say a, a full video on different ways of carrying these uh, for different periods during the war that's a, an intention of mine so once that's done there will be a link to it we won't go into any more detail here, but you want to get one of these as part of your basic kit. Definitely a very useful bit of kit to have. So there we have an overview of anti-gas equipment, uh, which I would recommend buying a starting kit. Uh, the light anti-gas respirator, obviously you're going to want to pick up first if you're primarily going to be doing late war. Uh, the Mark VI is the easiest early war haversack to pick up, obviously worn on the chest at the alert like this. Um, so finding a Mark V, unless you buy a reproduction, uh, is, is less easy. Um, but the, the Mark VI is probably the one that goes best with the kit we've looked at, as already said, because the pouches and so forth date the earliest that this is correct for to middle of 1940 or late 1940. So there it is. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. I will be doing further videos, um, if not a part of this series, then as an adjunct to it, looking at slightly more kit. But as you can see here, including the trousers and boots and things we've looked at in video one, this is basically a full setup of, of infantry kit here. You could do training late 1940 1941 with this setup here and, and you, you're fine you don't need anything else than what we've looked at in this series of videos uh, and likewise with the light anti-gas respirator substituted and the gas cape carried on the back of the belt generally late war this setup is perfectly adequate for a late war reenacting as well so um there it is as i say quite a lot of ground covered there by the items that i've recommended picking up here and that we've looked at in this little series of videos. So I do hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you do find my uploads interesting, my uh, things we look at in the, in the videos, then please consider subscribing. Uh, and if you're already subscribed or newly subscribing, make sure you hit the notification button so you're alerted when I upload future videos. 
Uh, if you're interested in seeing more photographs of the collection and maybe talking to me, uh, best place to do that would be the Facebook page where I do post photographs on Instagram as well. And there's a link to both of those in the description of the video. And that's it for now. So until next time, bye for now.